The bells of St. Jacob's Church in a town called Herxheim am Berg, sounding the midday call. Nestled in hills dressed in the rich vineyards of Germany's southern wine region, the church dates back ten centuries. In medieval times, people believed bells could vanquish demons. But some demons are bigger than others, and there is a secret in the clock tower. An 83-year-old bell bearing a swastika and the name of Adolf Hitler. The town's mayor, Ronald Becker, has just resigned over the controversy created by the bell's recent rediscovery. But he still agreed to take us up for a look. So it says the... Alles fürs Vaterland, Adolf Hitler. Und yeah. da ist es Und das Everything for the Fatherland, it says, dated 1934, the year Hitler came to full power. Nazi symbols have been banned in Germany since 1949, with some exceptions for historical artifacts. But Becker says he sees no reason to remove it. Die Glocke sollte eigentlich hängen bleiben und sollte weiter ihren Dienst tun. The bell really should remain hanging there, he says, and should carry on doing its duty, because we have here an historic bell. Becker says that town councillors have known about it since at least 1951. There was publicity again in 2011, he says, with no outcry. The village next to Herxheim am Berg is home to a retired teacher and part-time organist named Sigrid Peters. She's the one who discovered that the bell exists and still rings. She calls it a disgrace. It bothered me, she says, that other people just like me would hear the sound of beautiful church bells and have no clue that there's a swastika on it. Peters wants the bell silenced, not destroyed. She believes remnants of the Nazi era must be kept as a warning to future generations, but only when presented in proper context. Peters has received anonymous threats since she wrote to the local newspaper about the bell, people angry with her for stirring up the past. Berlin. If ever there were a capital of memory, this is it. The city's Holocaust Memorial, dedicated to the some six million European Jews murdered by the Nazis, sits right in the heart of the German capital, a vast sea of stone slabs, anonymous, dehumanizing. Commuters taking trains to or from work at Wittenberg Platz are reminded that it was the same station from which so many Jews and others deemed undesirable by the Nazis were deported. They have not been uh, denying. No, they have not been uh, forgetting. Analyst Josef Janning says constant self-examination has allowed Germany to evolve to its current state, the most powerful country in Europe, with a chancellor, Angela Merkel, seen as a moral leader on the world stage, and for many here, as an antidote to the U.S. President Donald Trump, who seemed to have a hard time condemning a neo-Nazi march in Charlottesville. You will see that there is no way to escape the fact that this has been the center of the Nazi terror machine. It was done from this city. And this city will tell you in a number of ways it was here where it happened. The recent debate over Confederate statues in the United States has drawn the gaze of many here to the German example. Few countries have confronted a dark past as profoundly or as doggedly. But that doesn't mean there haven't been differences of opinion over how best to do that. Hitler, How Could It Happen? is an exhibition examining the rise of the Third Reich and set in an old concrete air raid shelter. Managing director Enno Lenze says any historical exploration of Hitler is sensitive in Germany in part because of fears that historical sites or objects could become neo-Nazi shrines. Even though he runs a museum, Lenzi says he can see no argument in favor of keeping the Hersheim Bell at St. Jacob's Church. 
asked, if you ask them if you're a neo-Nazi, they say, no, no, it's, it's not that I'm a neo-Nazi, but, and then some weird explanation will follow about tradition and I don't know what, whatever. But uh, I think no Democrat and no anti-fascist will keep a bell saying, Hail Hitler. There are other ways Germans work to keep the lessons of history alive. The mantra of never again, of necessity a continuum, passed down from generation to generation. <laughs> Every year, students from teacher Rainer Seafield's history class make a pilgrimage to this cemetery on the outskirts of Berlin. Here, they clean the gravestones of more than 1,000 forced laborers from outside of Germany who died under the Nazi regime. For one so young, they are caring but heavy acts of atonement, especially for a history not of their own making. <laughs> Wilhelmina Ellinger is 14. I think I can't change anything about it and I'm not proud of it, but I think uh, how Germany just like uh, grew after it and uh, rebuilt itself, I think that's pretty good because it's like one of the pow most powerful countries in the world right now. And I think that's like a good sign that we learned. So much so that many Germans finally feel far more comfortable waving the flag, although not in a nationalistic way, they'll hasten to add. We didn't used to think about this country as being great. No? In, not in the sense of being über alles as the, the first verse of the German, traditional German national anthem goes, Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles but in the sense of being a good place to live. Nor does it mean that Germans feel free to finally untether themselves from the past, especially in Germany's current political climate. Another ritual of remembrance on a Berlin street. Small crowds gathered outside of an apartment block watch as some of the paving stones in front of it are dug up. They're replaced with little brass blocks known as Stoppelstein, stumbling blocks, memorials placed in front of the homes people either fled or were deported from during the Nazi years. This couple and their five-year-old daughter made it to France before being sent to Auschwitz, where they were killed. There are now more than 30,000 of these little stones across the country. The brainchild of German artist Gunter Demnig. He arrives in a kind of Indiana Jones type flurry to tap the stones into place before disappearing again without a word, sometimes even before the ceremony. Asked about Herxheim and the Hitler bell, Rabbi Walter Rothschild shrugs. He's more concerned about gains on the far right ahead of elections later this month. There are more important things at the moment. There's a whole refugee crisis through the whole of Europe. There's a whole mess that's happening in the Middle East. There's a whole problem of the climate and starvation in Africa. I'm not going to get worked up about a bell in a church. But the old relic in Herzheim has, in fact, been silenced in the end. The day after we visited, church elders took a decision they'd previously said was for the town council to make, and the bell will ring no more. It won't be enough to vanquish the demons that haunt Germany, but as some memories fade, others are restored. Margaret Evans, CBC News, Berlin.